Hey everybody, Mr. Morrell here. We're going to talk about homework assignment 11.2, which is about the Pythagorean theorem. Um, I really, um, what do I want to say? I like this worksheet a lot. And I'm really glad that we talked about area in the video before, because if you're watching this video, it means that you're probably struggling with this homework. And so I want to use um, kind of what at least I talked about in my classes about the Pythagorean theorem with you guys um, using this idea about area to understand better the length of a side, which is kind of weird, but it's cool how these things kind of start to tie together. So uh, let's start with the beginning. The Pythagorean theorem relies heavily on your ability to tell the difference between the legs and the hypotenuse of a right triangle. On the triangles below, you need to label both legs and the hypotenuse. So every right triangle is made up of two legs and a hypotenuse. And so I want to help you guys know how to tell the difference. Um, I might not write the full word of hypotenuse on here because it's so tricky for me to write words on the iPad, but I expect you to write the full word out. It's good practice to get that spelling down. So. A right triangle always has one right angle in it, and the two legs are the sides of the triangle that make up um, the right angle. So if you can find the right angle on a right triangle, then you know exactly where the two legs are. And then the side that's on the opposite side of the right triangle is the hypotenuse. Okay, and again, I expect you to write that full word out. So the first three questions just ask us to label the legs. I'm putting, I'm like tracing the thing in color so you can see them. So here's the two legs because they meet at the right angle. And right there is the hypotenuse. Now I was kind of trying to trick you. Most people want to call the bottom of a triangle like this. So many people want to call that the leg just because it's resting on the bottom. It's just kind of a visual trick I was trying to play on you. But remember, by definition, the two legs are the ones that make the right angle. So label those legs and then go ahead and label the hypotenuse. Okay, then the next level one question asks us to write the Pythagorean theorem. And I'm okay if most of you don't use the Pythagorean theorem. Like I totally understand that it's tricky for you, but I still need you to be able to write it and be familiar with it. So the Pythagorean theorem says that a squared plus b squared is going to equal c squared. And then it says which variables in the Pythagorean theorem above represent the legs. So I kind of tried to color code the Pythagorean theorem for you so that you can see that both a and b are the variables we use for the length of the legs. Then question six says which variable in the Pythagorean theorem represents the length of the hypotenuse? Well, that is going to be variable C. C is the length of the hypotenuse. Question 7. When solving these equations, look um, for the missing side. At some point, you will need to undo the squaring operation. In other words, what will help you undo that? Well, this is a lot like question 4 in your last homework assignment. If you know that the area of a square is 9, we want to know what the length of the sides were that made that. So it kind of gives you an example here. If we knew the length of the side and we squared it and ended up with a 9 as an area, how much would the side be? Well, the operation that we use to undo squaring is called a square root. Okay, and again, that is talked about in your last homework assignment, but I just want you to know and we, in first trimester especially, talked a lot about the box of doom. And we wrote a box of doom where we said what was happening to x. And we hadn't encountered a square in the past, but now we are. We're saying, hey, x is being squared. Well, the opposite operation for that is the square root. Okay, let's come down here. So we need to use the Pythagorean theorem to find the missing side. And... Um, I want to do this in two different ways. I'll use one way for question 8, and I'll use another way for question 10. For question 8, I want to use the picture model that we talked about in class. And the picture model that we talked about in class said, hey, take the legs 
and create squares kind of like this. And what we talked about in class is that we can find the areas of those squares. So for example, this area here, well, the side length is three, and so it's a square, so I know that all of the sides are three. So I could take three times three, and I'm gonna even draw that in, and say, hey, the area of this square here is a nine. Then I have a, a square down here, and I can say, okay, well, the area of this square here is going to be a 4 by 4, so that means that the area of this square is 16. And something that was really cool that we discovered in class is that if I take this area plus this area, so basically if I take the legs and create squares out of the lengths of those legs, well I can add those two areas together and that in this example would be 25 and it turns out that that is the area of the square made with the hypotenuse up here so I know that the area of the square is 9 the area of this square is 16 9 plus 16 is the area of this square right here so now we need the square root function again this is like question 4 from yesterday's assignment or from 11.1 um, if I know that the area of this square is 25, in other words, there are 25 um, boxes inside of here. Kind of trying to draw this out for you. Yeah, something like that. Pretend they were perfect. 25 perfect boxes like that. We want to know how many are along the side. One, two, three, four, five. Um, or another way we could do that is to say, hey, Whatever this question mark is, when I squared it, I ended up with 25. And so kind of like we talked about up here, if I need to undo a squaring function, I could take the square root. So in your calculators, if you do the square root of 25, it's going to tell you 5. In other words, the length of this hypotenuse right here is 5. Okay? Now... Again, that was an area model, and for some of you, especially if you're watching this video, I'm guessing it might be helpful for you to always draw out those squares to reason and to think about things. We could do the same thing here. It's going to be really easy. If I make a square, that's going to be an area of 1, because each side is 1. If I draw a square here, that area is going to be a 1 also. If I add these two together, that's going to tell me that whatever the area is down here, whatever the side length, the area is 2. And so, what I would want to do is to take the square root of 2, and that is going to be my area, or my side length. But, um, oh, and in fact, before I print this, I'm going to make, I'm going to revise these a little bit. I'm probably going to say the area equals, and you give me an exact amount, and then I'll do a squiggle so that you can approximate um, the area. So, let me do this using the Pythagorean Theorem. If you're going to use the Pythagorean Theorem, I always start by labeling what is my A, what is my B, and what is my C. Well, we know our two legs are going to be A and B, and then we're trying to figure out C. Um, so using the Pythagorean Theorem, I can say, well, here is the Pythagorean Theorem. A squared equals B squared. Oh my gosh, sorry. A squared plus B squared equals c squared. I'm going to take out the a and put a 1 in its place, take out the b and put a 1 in its place, and we're trying to figure out c. Oh my gosh. Well, 1 squared is just 1. 1 squared is 1, and that's going to equal c squared. 1 plus 1 is 2. This is kind of what we were just barely talking about. And so 2 equals c squared. The area is not 2. The area is the square root of 2, because we have to get c by itself. Right now, c is being squared. So if I take the square root, I'm going to get the square root of 2. Is an exact answer. And an approximate answer is, um, I think in my calculator, it's about 1.41 is a good approximate answer. Okay? Now, let's go on to the next side. 
Same idea here. Um, I'm going to revise the way that this is written, I think, because I still haven't printed these worksheets for you, so that would be a good thing for me to do. Okay, now, let's use the Pythagorean theorem to answer question tw uh, 12. Again, if you want to draw pictures, you can, but we're changing the information that we know at this point. Okay? We're trying to figure this out. We know that the area of this blue square is 100. We know the area of this little square is 1. And so we're trying to figure out, okay, what does this area need to be so that I can add it to 1 and end up with 100? Well, for me, that's kind of simple. Like, that's just like saying 99. This area here has to be 99, so that 99 plus 1 will give us 100. Okay, that tells you the area, it doesn't tell you the side length. And so you could take the square root of that for the length of the side of that square. I know that looks like a rectangle, it's because I didn't have space. Anyway, that's an area model. Or if you prefer, oops, the Pythagorean theorem, I'm going to do that too, just so we get the practice. And the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. My legs are a and b, my hypotenuse is c. So a squared, that we're trying to figure out, plus 1 squared is going to equal 10 squared. So a squared plus 1 is going to equal 100. Well, this is a box of doom question where we talk about a. a is being squared first, and then added by 1. So let's do the opposite steps backwards. Subtract 1 from both sides. a squared equals 99. Oh, that looks familiar. That just took care of that step. And now I take the square root of both sides to take care of this. And so the exact answer is the square root of 99. An approximate answer is, I'm doing that on my calculator right now, 9.95. Okay, let's come down here, talk about question 13. Question 13 can be tricky. If we're at level 3, I'm going to be using the formula, just because that's going to be more comfortable for me. So I'm going to call 5a square root of 7b. And let me just tell you that you can change a and b. That's not a problem. But you can't change c, just willy-nilly. We're trying to find c. So, 5 squared plus the square root of 7 squared equals c squared. Now, a lot of people get really confused by the square root of 7 squared. But go ahead and type that in your, in your um, calculator. And I would recommend using parentheses. Anytime you're going to square something, it's usually a good idea to throw that in parentheses. So do the square root of 7 in parentheses and square that. So we would have 25 equal, oh, sorry, 25 plus, if you're doing this in your calculator, you're going to see that the square root of 7 squared is just the number 7, and that that equals c squared. Well, 25, I'm going to come up here, 25 plus 7, let me just double check, is 32, so 32 equals c squared, and now I want to get c by itself, so let's take the square root of both sides, my exact answer is the square root of 32, and my approximate answer is, let me do that in my calculator, 5.66 is a good approximation. Alright, so go ahead, keep working on those level 3 questions. Um, notice, we have, a, we have two right triangles here, one here and one here. But my question is, how long is this whole side? That was a hint for you. Okay, and yeah, good luck on the level fours. I think you'll do great. I'm not worried about you guys at all. Okay, well, I will see you, um, like, later and stuff. Oh, let me help you a little bit on this level four. When you square this side for your Pythagorean theorem, because A equals 2X, 
make sure you do that in parentheses. Whatever the square is, it's going to affect both the 2 and the x. You're basically doing 2x times 2x. Okay? Don't let me down. I know you won't. You're great. Okay, I'll see you guys later. Gators.